Twenty-two and two forty-eight. Okay, so let's take two forty-eight. Twenty-two. Okay, uh, we did a similar problem. Let me see. I'm pretty sure we did a similar problem. Is this on from the checklist? Okay. Uh, Let's try and find a similar one. Uh, we did um, we did problem ten on page two forty eight. Just for that reason. So let's see if this is okay. Do you want to do problem ten again? Okay. So in 10 we have uh, a particle is mo moving along this uh, hyperbola and when it reaches 4 comma 2, and it, tell me if it's similar enough, the y coordinate is decreasing at a rate of, so dy over dt is decreasing at a rate of 3 centimeters per second. Uh, how fast is the x coordinate of the point changing at that instant? So we're asked to find the x over dt when x is 4 and when y is 2. Is this close enough? Is this the particle moves along the curve? As the particle passes through the point, its x coordinate increases at this rate. How fast is the distance from the particle to the origin changing at that instant? So since we're talking about the distance, you have to use the, the Pythagorean theorem. So if this is the particle at any instant, then you will have this, which is y, you will have this, which is x, and you will have this, which is w. And in that problem, you are asked to find dw over dt. And you just have to write the Pythagorean theorem first, and then, and then find dw over dt. Does that, is that good enough? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. I, I no, no, no. I was just looking to see if there is sim it's similar enough. Okay, so I was just explaining what uh, the additional part that is not in problem ten but is in twenty two. That was all. But yes, I'm going to finish that. Yes. So I'm asked to find the x over dt. I will solve for the x over for x first or not. Just differentiate implicitly. Doesn't matter really. So the first function prime. So x is a function of t, y is a function of t, this is a product. The first function prime is dx over dt times y plus x times dy over dt equals 0. I'm asked to find dx over dt, so I'm after this. I will move this term to the other side and divide by y. So dx over dt equals negative x over y dy over dt. And now I have all the information I need. I have dy over dt, which is negative 3. I have x, which is 4. And I have y, which is 2. So 4 over 2 is 2, times 3 is 6, minus minus will make it positive. So this is 6 centimeters per second. So when the particle goes through this point, uh, the rate of change of the x coordinate with respect to time is 6 centimeters per second. And it's positive. Is this better? How do you, how do you use the Pythagorean theorem? Uh, this is for 22. Oh, so you have w squared equals x squared plus y squared. We had a similar example with a, um, a car going east and the other one going south. Same thing. So one is going north, one is going west, and this is the distance between the two of them. So the same idea, and you will be using um, implicit differentiation from y squared equal, w squared equals x squared plus y squared. So all these three are functions of time. Is this blurry or is it clear?
Is it clear? Okay. Is this good enough? Is this good enough, everyone? Is it a yes or so and so or okay? Yes, Tommy. Let me know if we need to go back to any of this. Yes. 48 on 198. Very good. 198. 98. 48. Yes, we did that in class together several times. And you can also use L'Hopital's rule, which will be less than a line. Is that good enough? Very simple situation. Plug it in and then use L'Hopital's rule. Because now we know the chain rule. We know the chain rule because it's sine of x minus 1, although the derivative of x minus 1 is still 1. So you, get, you have 0 over 0 and just apply L'Hopital's rule. Better? Or factor. And you'll see what happens. Thirty-four on one ninety-seven. Let's take a look. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Yes. So, for what values of x does the graph of f has a horizontal have a horizontal tangent? Okay. So, okay. Let's let's work on this one. So, f of x equals e to the x times cosine x. Horizontal tangent means f prime equals 0. Okay? So f prime is e to the x prime is e to the x times cosine x and minus e to the x because sine prime is sin, uh, cosine prime is sine, negative sine, equals 0. I will factor out e to the x and then cosine x minus sine x equals 0. e to the x can never be 0. If you remember the graph, this is very important to remember. The graph of e to the x does not touch the x-axis. So this can never be 0. So in order to um, solve the equation, the only option we have is this. In this situation, we will divide both sides by cosine x. So is it safe? Am I allowed to? The answer is yes, because Sine and cosine cannot be 0 at the same time. If sine is 0, cosine will not be 0, and vice versa. So it's safe to divide both sides by cosine. I will not remove a solution or solutions by doing so. So then you have tangent x equals 1 when you divide both sides by cosine x. And then you have several options here for solving this. You have to go to the unit circle. Tangent is positive here and here. And you have to find those angles. The easiest angle to work with when tangent x is 1 means x is how much? What, what angle has tangent 1? Say it again. 45. That's the only angle that has both sine and cosine the same, which results in tangent being 1. Very good. So then you will find one angle in the first quadrant, and you will find another in the third. Very good. So at those numbers, this function has a horizontal tangent. Horizontal tangent means a derivative 0 which means the points will give us a max or a min. Good. Anything else? Is there anything else we need to go back to? Are we almost done to the, with the checklist? Anything else? Yes, please, Mommy. 
that's okay. 72 on 206. Yeah, we had a question uh, like that last time, so um, so let me just give you an idea. So let's say I have x to the fourth plus e to the x multiplied by the function, a function of uh, 4 x squared. And let's say I want to differentiate this. I have to differentiate as a product, where this is function 1 and this is function 2, correct? Okay, so I differentiate the first one and I get 4x to the third plus e to the x multiplied by the second one plus, so far so good, I copy the first one and I differentiate the second one. When I differentiate the second one, what do I get? I have to write multiplied by f prime of 4x squared times of course. And that's it, and you cannot do anything else. Is this good enough? Very good. Next question, next problem, anything else? So are we going to be ready for to turn it in on Thursday and the test a week from today? Yes? Yes? I've, do you all have this form that I... Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Okay. So what would you like to continue with? Or we look at this. Many of these problems were done in class, so we don't need to do all of them again. So, um, but these, for example, may not have been. So let's work on A and B. Unless, I'm sorry, I didn't want to mean to rush you. Do you have other questions? Okay, so let's start by looking at uh, on working on uh, y equals the square of x plus x cubed plus one over x. Uh, everything squared. And we are trying to find the derivative. Or dy over dx. Oh, sorry, I gave you a tip. Do we have an answer for the first one? Yes? Do we have an answer? Careful. Or minus one over Perfect. Thank you. Any questions here? Very good. Remember to commit to memory. One over x prime is negative one over x squared. Very important. Very good. Any questions here? Is this okay? Is that a yes? Is that a no? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so now we want f of x, which is sine 3x, everything divided by cosine x minus sine x. 
So we want to differentiate this. We have an answer. Okay, let's start. Very good. Cosine 3x times? Times? Very good. Awesome. Times the denominator in parentheses. Don't forget parentheses. Minus. I copy the numerator and I differentiate the denominator. What do I get? Negative. Yes. Minus. Very good. Over cosine x minus sine x, everything squared. You can distribute if you want, but one thing I don't want you to do, make sure you do not simplify this piece from a term with a factor from the denominator. So you can eliminate parentheses if you would like to. So this is 3 cosine x cosine 3x minus 3 sine x cosine 3x minus plus both of them um, sine 3x sine x and plus sine 3x cosine x. As you know I always run out of room. Just make sure you are not tempted to simplify this piece with one of them. Be very careful. Any questions? Any questions on this? Are we okay? Yes, Joey? So you got the numerator because it's the minus. It's the quotient rule. Yes. So uh, use the order you like, but be very careful with this. I always use 1, 2, but it's up to you. So the first function prime is cosine 3x times the inner function prime times the denominator minus the numerator times the denominator prime. Now, if you want, you can twist this, but you cannot twist the, these because this one has to have minus in front. Is that okay, everyone? Yes? Okay. Moving on then. Um, y equals cosine cubed applied to e raised to tangent squared. So let's work on this. That's a quick question. Is this right? Uh, the denominator, the derivative of the denominator is minus 4. Uh, okay. Ready? Or do we need more time? Anyone dictate the first step? Yes? 
James, go ahead. Give it a shot. Awesome. Yes, I got it. Times the Not yet. Yes, not this one yet, but this one. And then this one. Negative sine of e to the tangent squared times this one prime now. Times e to tangent squared times now this. Two tangent x times secant squared. If I need to go through this again, let me know. Yes? Very good. So there are many functions in here. This has to be addressed first, then this one, then this one, and then this one. Actually, with the power. I should write power, the power first, and this is the fifth one. So when I differentiate the power, I have 3 cosine squared. But then I have to differentiate the function 2, which is negative sine. Then I, differ I have to differentiate function 3. So e to u is prime is e to u. And then I have to differentiate um, function 4, 2, tangent x. And then I differentiate tangent, which is secant squared. Does that make sense? Is this clear? Yes? Now, we did, say it again. Can you write it in terms of, I find it easier if I see it formally written. So in terms of the Roman numerals being defined by themselves. So like that problem just so, written. Um, so instead of having the actual equations written, you're just writing some symbols. So, um, so 1 prime. And then times like, like this, yeah. and then times three prime, and then times four prime, times five prime. Okay. Nice. So first I have three and subtract one from the power, and I'm done with this. But then I have cosine prime to determine this, which is negative sine e to tangent squared. This this is number two prime. This is number one prime. So now I have to differentiate e to u. So e to u will be this. But times the inner function prime, which I have to start with the power first. So 2 times tangent times secant squared. So this is number 5 prime, and this is number 4 prime. Is this better? It's not a trivial situation, though. Is this better? OK. Uh, we did problem f, uh, next one, f of x equals the square of 1 minus x squared, but we can do it again. So let's work on this for a minute. So this is a product of two functions, right? Do we need more time? So f prime. Again, we have to commit to memory the square root of a function prime. Very important, because otherwise we will always try to reinvent the wheel. So yes? times 
not yet. Negative 2x times arc cosine x and plus the square root of 1 minus x squared times sine and cosine, arc cosine and arc sine prime are the same except one of them is negative. Negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So please remember, this is important. So arc sine x prime is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, arc cosine prime is the same but with minus in front. And only one more I asked you uh, to look at, arc tangent prime, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Moving forward, forward to calc 2, these are extremely important. Others are too, but not as important as these. That's why I'm focusing on only few of the just three hyperbolic functions and uh, three inverse streak functions. So these are very important. Okay, moving on. Uh, what I would recommend here, do not uh, simplify these two. You could, it's fine. But because we have the same denominator, I will just write the square root of 1 minus x squared. And both of them are negative. You can put the negative in front. Uh, x arc cosine x and plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's check. Negative x arc cosine over this is this term. And um, negative this over this is this term, which is negative 1. But in order not to have um, to um, find the least common denominator, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I think it's a good decision to just give it give it as a fraction. Ready? Any questions on this? Okay. Uh, hyperbolic sine squared of hyperbolic cosine. So this is y, and we are asked to find dy over dx. So let's work on this, half a minute. We have an answer or not yet? Okay. Okay, can anyone dictate? Careful. Uh, it's hyperbolic sine squared applied to this. So, this is the product, the power rule combined with the chain rule. So, they're only products. Hyperbolic sine, because I subtract 1 from the power, of hyperbolic cosine. Now, I differentiate hyperbolic sine, which happens, yes, uh, oops, I'm sorry, which is a hyperbolic cosine of hyperbolic cosine. I'm going to erase that. 
and then times hyperbolic cosine, the inner function prime, hyperbolic sine. So times um, hyperbolic sine. Very good. That's it. Uh, do we uh, still need to do that problem? Look at the problem we did in class together. Uh, the particle moves according to the law, such and such. Uh, yes. Is this uh, the problem that I put on the checklist? What? Is this, I'm asking, is this the problem I put on the checklist? Okay. You want to do this one? Okay. So let's do that. So particle moves according to the law S or, or F of T, rather, T to the third minus 6T squared plus 9T. Where T is, T is in measured in seconds and S in meters. Or F in meters and T in seconds. Important because the measurement unit is very important. Good. So the first question is find the velocity at time T. It's part A. V of t represents f prime of t. Very good. And what do we get? We get 3t squared. Very good. Awesome. I will factor out a 3 right away. What is left? Let's see if we can factor. It may it may be useful later. Perfect. So we determine the velocity uh, at time t. Part b. What is the velocity after two seconds and then after four seconds? Very good. So v of two and v of four. So here's much easier to plug in 2. Let's, let's plug in 2 together. 2 minus 3 is? And 2 minus 1? One, 1. So negative 1 times 3. And measurement unit? Uh, Perfect. Now let's plug in 4. How much is 4 minus 3? How much is 4 minus 1? So how much is 3 times 3? Part C. When is the particle at rest? The particle is at rest when? Say it again. So when, I, when I'm sitting in my car, what is my speed if I'm at rest? Good. So then what do I have to write? Very good. The velocity of t equals 0. It's already factored. We anticipated the next question. How many solutions do we get? Very good. So at time t equals? Very good. Uh, what is the particle moving in the positive direction? So here's what we need to do. I want to put first uh, t minus 1 and then t minus 3 and then v of t. I rushed. So t minus 3, t minus 1, and then v of t. 0 to infinity. Of course, time has to be greater than equal to 0. So when is t minus 3 0? At 3. Where is t minus 1 0? At What is the sign of t minus 3 before 
it gets to zero. Remember, these are linear functions with what type of slope? What type of, of slope? Positive or negative? So do they look like this, coming from negative, crossing the x-axis and going to positive? Or do they look like this, coming from positive, crossing the x-axis and going to negative? Good, that's all I need. If the leading coefficient or the slope, in other words, were negative, how, what will the sequence of signs be? Bless you. If I have a negative leading coefficient, what will the sequence of signs be? Exactly. Good. So what is the velocity when t is 1? Hold on, hold on. So when either of these two is zero, what will the, the velocity be? Yeah. Yes, we already determined that. At three and one, right? The velocity must be zero. We already had that. Good. So what is the uh, sign of the velocity on the first subinterval, knowing that I'm multiplying t minus three by t minus one by three? Yes, because we are multiplying two negatives, right? So it's positive. Here and here. Good. So when the velocity is positive, the particle moves in the positive direction. When the velocity is negative, the particle moves in the negative direction. So what do we say? For t in the interval, there is no negative for time. Yes. I would I would not include the points because at those points is zero. Yes. You can include zero, however. Union. Particle moves in the positive direction. What about for t in the interval 1, comma 3? Particle moves in the negative direction. Very good. Moving on. Find the total distance traveled by the particle during the first se five seconds. So between 0 and 5 seconds. I know that the particle moves in the positive direction between 0 and 1. So that's one distance. So it will be the absolute value of s of 1. I'm sorry, it's f. We are using f. f of 1 minus f of 0 plus the distance that the particle is covering between 3 and 1 because the fact that it's coming back, it doesn't mean that it doesn't cover extra distance, right? So that the absolute value of f of 3 minus f of 1 plus, we are asked 0 to 5, plus the absolute value of f of 5 minus f of 3. So what I recommend, let's put the function in the graphing calculator. and y equals, so in y equals, we have, what was it, 3? No, where is my function? Right here. What was it? t to the third, right? t to the third minus, okay, so x cubed, and then minus 6x squared, and then plus 9x. And then go to second and table. Okay, let me check second and table set. Okay, still good. Second and table, and I will plug in zero. I will plug in one. I will plug in three. And I will plug in five. So then I'll go back. 
and copy f of 1. So it's 4 minus 0 plus f of 3 is the absolute value of 0 minus 4 plus f of 5, the absolute value of 20 minus 0. So 4 minus 0 and 0 minus 4 and 20 minus 0. So the absolute value of 4 is 4, the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, the absolute value of 20 is 20, so 28. Measurement unit. Very good. It's a total distance. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, find the acceleration at time t and after 4 seconds. How do I find the acceleration? Yes, but I recommend work on the raw velocity, not on any other step, on the raw velocity. So a of t equals... Very good. Now they're asking us to find a of 4, which is 24 minus 12, which is 12. Measurement unit for the acceleration this time. It's the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So it has to have be a ratio. The um, measurement unit for velocity over the measurement unit for time. So the velocity is meters per second, and this is second. Very good. The acceleration is measured into in meters by per second squared. Very good. And the last question here, when is the particle spinning up and when it is slowing down? Again, I recommend the following table, which I think it's very easy to understand and self-explanatory if you agree. So T between 0 and 5, that's all we really know. So I have V of T the sine of V of T and the sine of A of T, and then decision. I copy what I have from velocity. I have 0, 1, 3, and 5. So here it is. The velocity is 0, and it's positive, negative, positive. Let's do the same with the acceleration, but the acceleration has only one linear factor. So when is the acceleration zero? At two. So I have two and the acceleration zero. What will be the sequence of the signs for 60 minus 12? If it's a linear function with a positive slope, will be this sequence. If it has negative slope, it will have this sequence. So which one is it? So then it's the same. Decision. What is the conclusion on the first, second, third, and fourth subintervals? What would you say for the first one? The velocity is positive, but the acceleration is working against it. What does that do to the particle? Slowing down. Here, both are negative. So both go in the same direction. They're helping one another. The acceleration is increasing the speed. So the particle is speeding up. What happens between 2 and 3? Yes, because they work against each other. And what happens on the last subinterval? 3 to 5. They're both helping one another. The acceleration, in other words, is increasing the speed. So speeding up. Good. Next problem. Bless you. Bless you. Any questions on this problem? 
Okay, so let's work on number three. It's a very similar problem with the one we just talked about, I think. So we are given a function. We're asked to find f prime, simplify the final form by factoring, and find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at the point 1, 0. Okay. So the function is f of x equals x squared minus 1 squared times e to the x. Okay, can anyone put us on the right track? Function 1, function 2. Very good. Very good. Times e to the x. Perfect. Plus x squared minus 1 squared times So let's try and simplify this as much as possible. What can I factor out? And? Very good. x squared minus 1 and e to the x. Let's see what we have left. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yes, I could rearrange this. That's all I could do. So x squared minus 1, e to the x, x squared plus 4x minus 1. So simplify the final form by factor, we did. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at the point 1, 0. So this is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, where x1 is 1 and y1 is 0. But I need to determine this. How do I get the slope? In f prime, what do I plug in? Exactly. Is the derivative at 1? So let's see. But this is 0. I'm sorry? But remember, this is, this is point P. This is x equals 1. And I want to determine the slope of the tangent line. And this is a common point. Is that OK? Very good. So f prime of 1 is 0. This will be 1. And this will be 0, 0 times negative 1. So this is 0. So y equals? Perfect. So in other words, uh, the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at, at the point 1, 0 is y equals 0. Uh, we did the problem like 5. If you want, we can do it again. Uh, we can move on to implicit differentiation and logarithmic differentiation. So which one? And of course, the cost function again. Uh, which one? Uh, 4, we did an example in class. It's your problem from the checklist. I made one up last time. Isn't it? 
Am I correct? I hope you finish by Thursday. Okay. Yes. So what are we doing next? Five or six? Okay. So uh, y minus one to the fourth. Um, so it's f of y equals y minus one to the fourth divided by y plus two to the fifth. You can, if you want, it's not mandatory, but you can apply log and simplify the function if you want. The answer will be the same no matter what, if you do or if you don't. So let's work on it for a minute. Would you like to apply natural log or you don't want to apply natural log? You don't have to. So in this case, in this case, we have no choice. There is no differentiation rule for a function raised to another function. Here there is no escape. We have to apply log. But here it doesn't matter. If you think it's easier, you can apply. If you think it's not, we use the quotient rule. So which one are we going to work on? We want the quotient rule or applying log? I mean, we can do both. It doesn't matter. That's fine. So let's do the quotient rule. And then we can, as I said, we can do both. Do we want both or the quotient rule? Okay, so let's work on the quotient rule for a minute. We need more time or we want to work together or 